Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So this is going to be a quick video where we are going to discuss about Grafana Loki. And I have been receiving a few comments on YouTube as well as on LinkedIn. Uh, people wanted to know how to use Grafana Loki and Promptil. So this video is going to be all about that. Uh, now I have not really prepared anything uh, for this video. So we are just going to refer to Grafana documentation. So if you want to know about Grafana Loki, Grafana Loki is a log aggregation tool. So previously Grafana didn't have uh, Grafana Loki. So there was no capability to uh, monitor logs or drill down to log, log level details. So whatever we were doing is we were uh, monitoring matrix with uh, Prometheus and Grafana. Okay, so now we can uh, go to log level details by aggregating all the logs into Grafana Loki and then we can also use Grafana to visualize the logs. So uh, let's suppose you have around hundreds of servers where your application services are running on and if there is any issue is coming in any of the application, you don't, you, uh, you would, if you want to troubleshoot, you would have to go and make a SSH connection to that server. You have to log into that server. You have to go through a lot of uh, log logs uh, files and have to do the searching manually. So with the help of Grafana Locky and Grafana dashboard, you will be able to save that time. So that is the objective of using Grafana Locky. Now, uh, Grafana Loki is uh, architecture is little uh, complex. If you want to go into detail, you can go to Grafana deployment modes where the detail is mentioned, uh, where the details are mentioned. Now, in this one, we are just going to discuss about high level detail. We are not going to go to uh, Loki's each of the component level details. So in order to start monitoring application logs, we need to install uh, some sort of agent which is going to pull log details from application and then that agent is responsible to send the detail to Grafana Loki. So this agent needs to be installed on all the servers um, from which you want to monitor the logs. Okay, so basically this is going to be running on all the application servers. And this agent can be Grafana agent or it can be Promptail. So in this example, we are going to use uh, Graf uh, we are going to use Promptail to capture the logs and send it to Grafana Loki. So again, there are so many features you can go and discuss, or you can go and see the documentation. And if you want some specific topic to be discussed in detail, you can let me know in the comment section. Now uh, we are going to install Grafana Loki and, and Promptail on Docker. Okay. Um, why Docker? Because it is one of the simplest installation if you want to uh, you, if you want to know or if you want to learn about Grafana Loki or probably if you want to uh, start development, then this is one of the easiest way to start. So these are the commands which you need to run. So first command is what it is going to do is it is going to uh, it is going to basically create a YAML file. It is downloading a YAML file. So we are just going to copy it, go to the server. This is the server where we are. And let me show you the present working directory slash apps. So let's create a directory and we are going to keep uh, all the related files under that directory. So let me call it Loki Promptail demo and we are going to move into this directory and then we can copy the first command and paste it here. So let's do ls and you can see it has uh, downloaded this file Loki-config.yml. Let's open this file and see what is there inside. So if you open this config YAML file, you can see all the processes, all the configuration related to Grafana Loki. Okay, here you can see the directories where it is going to store the chunks and other information. Now, once you go through a Grafana Loki uh, architecture detail, then you'll be able to understand this configuration in more detail. But for now, all you need to understand is that we have downloaded Loki config.yml. Now we need to start uh, start Loki. So for that, we are going to copy the second command and going to run it here. Okay, so what it has done is it has uh, started Grafana Loki on Docker. So we can go to Docker, we can do container ls and you can see, let me minimize it little bit. Just going to run this again. So here you can see Grafana Loki. This is one of the container which is running Grafana Loki. Okay. 
that is all good now we can copy uh, copy the same we can copy the configuration command for prompt tail so now i'm going to copy and paste it here sorry i'm just going to copy it again paste it and do ls again you can see now we have prompt tail hyphen config.yml now we are going to run this one so it is going to basically create a docker container based on the configuration which is men mentioned in prompt tail hyphen config.yml so now we have installed Loki and we have installed prompt tail okay so how how does prompt tail know which uh, log files it needs to start monitoring so those information is mentioned in prompt tail config file so let's do ls hyphen lrt and then let's copy this path and see the content of this file so now if you see prompt tail hyphen config yaml let's try to understand this little bit so what it is doing is it is going to uh, copy the logs from this directory okay so this is basically streaming the logs or capturing the logs from this directory where slash log slash star log it means it is going to uh, it is going to capture all the files logs which ends with log okay so if you want to go to this directory let's just quickly go inside this directory and do ls hyphen lrt so you can see anything which is ending with dot log it is going to capture all of those uh, those files logs now i'm gonna move back to move back to uh, our demo directory let me clear the screen you can see we are back to this directory again so let's open this file again Now here you can see it is going to capture the logs from here and then it is going to send these logs all the logs to uh, Grafana Loki which is running on which is running at this URL okay. So now uh, let's again go back here and try to understand what this command has done okay. So what this command has done is it has created a Loki container and the name of the container is called Loki and also what it has done is it has export exposed a port which is called 3100 3, okay so if you want to access loki uh, loki uh, api we need to basically use this port so how we ensure that our loki uh, is running up and running and it is able to uh, you know expose the logs so in for that what we can do is we need to connect to the server where we have installed Loki. So port is one. So sorry, the host name is 192, 168. I'm sorry, the IP is 192.168.0.19, and then port is 3100. And then we can write slash matrix. Hit enter. If you are able to see this data, it means Loki is working properly and also you can do ready so here you can see if you do ready it is saying ingester is not ready so ingester is again uh, one of the services uh, which runs inside you can say it is a sub services which runs for Loki. so again uh, you don't need to worry about this one just you can see here if it is showing ready which it means everything is okay uh, if you already able to see the data here if under matrix it means everything is fine you don't need to uh, check ready or anything else okay so that's about installing grafana Loki and prompt tail now we need a visualization layer so i already have uh, i have grafana services up and running so let me show you we can do system ctl status grafana hyphen server so in your case if you have not installed uh, grafana and make sure you install grafana as well uh, after installing prompt tail and Loki, you can install grafana as well so for grafana i have already created many tutorials so we are not going into much detail about grafana in this video okay so let me clear the screen and grafana runs on port 3000 so i'm going to go to this url this is where grafana is running on and now we can we can start creating data source for Loki. 
So here I had already previously created a data source. So I'm just going to remove it. Let's delete this one and start fresh. So click on data sources. You are going to land on this page. Click on add data source and then search for Loki. And here you need to provide the URL where Loki is running on. So in our case, we know that it is running on this URL and the port is going to be 3100. Then scroll down. You don't need to change anything else because by default there is no authentication enabled. But in production, you might want to enable those things and you want to give those details. But for development, we can just scroll down, click on save and test. If everything is okay, you are going to see this green message saying that data source connection is successful. You can uh, save and test and then you can select explore from here or you can also go here on explore. Now here in explore, now we are going to query uh, Grafana Loki. So for that, we are going to change the data source and going to select Loki. And here, this is again uh, the graphical, graphical interface for querying the data. We can change it to code if you want to type the code or query directly. So first let's see builder and then we are going to go to job. And here you can see we have where logs. Now where this where log is coming from, again, you can go back to prompt tail config.yml, open it up. You can see this job name is called where logs. Okay, so that's why you are seeing in job name, you can see where logs, which is coming here. Now, if we do job name equal to where logs and run the query, then we should be able to see all the logs. Okay. So which all files these logs are coming from? You can see this log, this line number one is coming from boot.log. Again, it is also coming from boot.log. There might be uh, some logs which, which will be coming from different files. Okay. Uh, because we are monitoring all the files here. So, what about if we want to see all the files which is coming from any all the logs which is coming from any particular log okay not from boot.log in that case one thing which you can do here is you can change it to file name and then it is going to show you all the logs which is coming from different files okay so let's say if you are interested only in mail logs then you can select file name equal to mail log and select run query and then now it is showing you all the logs which is coming only from mail log file. Now, uh, another thing, again, if you are using Grafana, you already know you can use uh, more matches. Okay, and here you will be able to do multi select. So now you are seeing all the logs which is coming either from mail log or boot log. Okay, so you can see there are so many number of logs available here. Now let's say if we want to monitor uh, any other directory, okay, we want to monitor logs which are available in any other directory. So how we can do that thing? Now let's try to do one thing. We will try to monitor uh, logs of Grafana, okay, Grafana application because Grafana also generates some logs. So we will try to monitor logs for Grafana. So let me go to CD where CD logs log and here we can see we have a folder called grafana so we are going to go to grafana directory first and do ls let me clear the screen we are here okay so let's say we want to monitor all the logs which are available here in this directory so what we need to do is we can copy this directory and we can update the prompt tail configuration file Okay, so which is available in Loki underscore prompt tail demo directory. So we are going to update. So we are going to create one more target here. Okay, so we are going to modify this file and I'm going to copy this and I'll be pasting it here. Okay, so we now have created one more targets and here in targets, we are going to change the job name. We are going to change the job name and going to call it Grafana logs. And then also we need to change the path because Grafana logs are available in this directory. So we are going to copy it. And under Grafana, we want to 
monitor everything which ends with dot log okay or, or log so that's all we need to do we can now uh, copy and save it now notice one more thing if your if your target uh, host name is different you need to change this host name here as well okay so now i'm going to save it and just going to see the content again just to make sure it whatever we changes we made has been saved okay so this has been saved now we need to restart uh, prompt tail so in order to restart prompt tail since we are running it on docker container we can just type docker restart prompt tail okay so prompt tail has been restarted it means now it will start reading all the logs from uh, grafana logs uh, grafana application logs and going to start sending it to loki and then again with the help of grafana we'll be able to visualize those logs here so let's refresh it and here let's see job name because we we should have a job name called grafana's logs yeah we can see that grafana logs is available here click on run query and now these are the logs which is coming from grafana uh, grafana logs okay so here you can see uh, grafana logs is different from system logs so this is the, again one of the power of grafana loki that it can read any kind of logs whether it is in json format typical log format or any text structure okay you'll be able to see all those logs uh, here now as you can see the logs are huge and probably we are not interested in all the logs we want to only see the logs which is having keyword of failed or maybe we are only interested in logs which is having level equal to error okay so in that case we can apply that filter and for that one i'm going to change to code uh, yeah so this is the syntax which we need to use so we need to use uh, pipe equal to level error so it is going to show all the logs which has this line which contains level equal to error okay uh, by the way uh, we need to you know do some hands-on in log queries and for that one i think you can go through this uh, detailed documentation you have to play a bit in order to understand how a log uh, query works if for example this one log format i use this one as well and this one works little differently for example if i want to change it and here again you can see it is going to give us only the data which contains which is having level equal to error you can also apply any other filter for example let's say if you are interested in data where level equal to info you can change it to level equal to info and now you can see all of this log is having level of info okay obviously you can do a lot of concatenation a lot of and or condition but for now in this video probably going to we are going to restrict ourselves to this one but yes please go ahead and use a log query documentation to see all the all the operators or all the options available for you to apply all the filters and play with your log data now we are going to go to let's quickly do one more thing we are going to go to dashboards and create a new dashboard and here we are going to add a new panel and here we are going to use logs panel and then here in the data source we are going to select Loki and in the code we are going to put the query which we just copied going to click on run queries and we should be able to see the log data available here in the panel you can see the log data is available here in the panel and let's change it to uh, Grafana application logs click on apply and here you can see all the grafana application logs